Hello, welcome to this particular lesson on semiconductors. In today's lesson, we're going to look to try and understand about the action of semiconductors. So, we're going to be focusing on the following key ideas. Understanding how the resistance and the resistivity of a semiconductor can change with both temperature and light intensity, and then compare and contrast the behavior of semiconductors with the behavior of conductors, which links in to the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification. So it actually sits under the topic of resistivity as you've got to consider the resistivity of thermistors and LDRs. Now, in previous lessons, we have considered the concept of resistivity. Now, resistivity of a material is defined as the resistance of a one meter length with a one meter cross-sectional area of a material. So it's measured in ohm meters and it's a very important quantity as we can use this quantity to both quantify the resistance and the impedance to the flow of charge but also okay, the conductivity itself, so how much the charge will flow. So as resistivity is a measure of how much impedance a material produces to an electrical current, it's actually a lot more useful than resistance as resistivity is the same for a material regardless of its dimensions. So the resistivity of a certain material such as iron or copper or nichrome is the same regardless of whether it's a wire or it's a cylinder or it's a square or it's a cube. The dimensions of the material don't affect the resistivity. So it's fundamentally a quantitative measure of how much the mobile charge carriers are prevented from moving in a current in that material. So as we mentioned before, resistivity will not vary on length and it will not vary on cross-sectional area. It will only vary on the actual material that it's made from. So it can actually be a very useful quantity to identify unknown materials because the resistivity of a material is the same regardless of the situation in terms of its length or its cross-sectional area. However, there is an issue with resistivity because it doesn't incorporate the temperature of a material. So whilst the length and the cross-sectional area are unaffect, don't affect the resistivity, the temperature does affect the resistivity, it does affect the resistance of a material. Now, that is why when you are quoting resistivity, you should always quote it with a certain temperature. So for example, the resistivity of iron at 20 degrees Celsius, which is approximately room temperature, is how you would give a resistivity of a value. But if the, if the temperature will affect the resistivity, how does it do so? Now, actually, there are three types of materials we need to consider when we look at how temperature impacts on resistivity. So we've got conductors, such as bulbs and wires and resistors. We've got semiconductors, such as LDRs, thermistors and transistors. And we've also got insulators. Now, we've covered conductors before in this particular course. Okay. Now, we looked at that when we carried out the idea of resistance. So fundamentally, what is resistance? Well, basically, when mobile charge carriers flow through material in the form of current, they'll collide with the metal ions making up that conductor. Now, these collisions cause vibrations, which in turn dissipate the energy of the mobile charge carriers to an internal energy store, most commonly resist, uh, um, thermal energy heat. Now, the idea is if you have a higher temperature, the ions of the conductor will vibrate with a greater amplitude, so they'll move backwards and forwards over a greater distance. This leads to more collisions with the mobile charge carriers, which will cause more energy to transfer from the kinetic energy store of the mobile charge carriers into an internal energy store such as heat. Therefore, the higher the resistance, the higher the resistivity. Fundamentally, the, the metal ions vibrate with a greater distance, so there's more collisions with metal ions, so the metal ions collide more and slow down, which lowers the current, and there's your resistance increasing. Now, if there's a lower temperature, there are, there's a smaller amplitude of vibration with the metal ions, so there is less collisions, so there is less energy dissipated, so the resistance and resistivity is lower. So fundamentally, what we learned before is that with a conductor, when you increase the temperature, the resistance and resistivity increase. So we've talked about that previously. So to summarize that, 
when the temperature increases, the metal ions vibrate with a greater amplitude, so there's a more collision between the mobile charge carriers and the metal ions, so it increases resistivity. So just to fundamentally recap that, when temperature increases, the resistivity increases also. Now, you've, what else we can think of conductors? We've got to compare and contrast that with semiconductors. So semiconductors include things like thermistors. So we'll talk about this in a bit more detail, but a semiconductor can change its resistivity depending on the external conditions of the surroundings. So in the example of a thermistor, the temperature of a thermistor can affect the resistivity of a thermistor. Another example of a semiconductor is a light-dependent resistor, or LDR. Now again, this semiconductor can change its resistivity by the amount of radiation that's hitting the LDR. So the light intensity hitting the LDR can affect the resistivity of the LDR. Now, we need to look at how do these semiconductors, conductors and insulators vary in the particle level, and how does this explain the difference in their behaviour? So to consider a conductor, a conductor is a material with lots of mobile charge carriers in its atomic structure. A rigorous definition is that a conductor has enough mobile charge carriers to form a current when a potential difference is placed across it. Now, an insulator is a material with very few mobile charge carriers in its structure. Now, in theory, a perfect insulator would have no mobile charge carriers whatsoever. Now, we've never actually observed this in the known universe so far, okay, so it's a purely theoretical idea. Now, a more rigorous definition of an insulator is an insulator that does not have enough mobile charge carriers to form a current when a potential difference is placed across it. Now, the, there are possible charge carriers in an insulator, but they're so tightly bound to the nucleus in the insulator that no energy whatsoever can liberate these charge carriers. So the conductivity and resistivity of an insulator is unaffected by the temperature or the light intensity. Now, a semiconductor is a material with a reasonable amount of mobile charge carriers in the structure, but more importantly than that, they can change how many mobile charge carriers they have in their structure. So you can change how many mobile charge carriers you have in a semiconductor structure by carrying out work on the semiconductor. So let's take, for example, a thermistor, an example of a semiconductor. Now, fundamentally, a thermistor is just a store of charge carriers. Now, in, a, in many semiconductors, they've got lots and lots of charge carriers, but most are not mobile, most are not freely moving. Now, a semiconductor can release these charge carriers and make them mobile, make them free, if you give them energy, if you put work into a semiconductor. So, for example, in a thermistor, when you increase the temperature of the surroundings, this means thermal energy is being placed into the thermistor. So this will give the charge carriers in the thermistor more energy. This will release some of these charge carriers okay, to become free or mobile charge carriers, which will increase the current and decrease the resistance and resistivity. So the increased energy allows some of the electrons to leave the thermistor. Okay, so what will happen is they will then join the electrical circuit the thermistor is attached to. So as a result, there are more mobile charge carriers in the circuit. So there will be less resistance and resistivity. So as we said before, when the mobile charge carriers become free, get okay, a higher temperature, there's then more charge carriers in the metal wires. So there will be a lower resistance and lower resistivity. So fundamentally, as we mentioned before, at a higher temperature, there are more mobile charge carriers because more charge carriers being liberated from the atomic structure as work is being placed into the structure. So there are now more mobile charge carriers in the metal wires, which will decrease the resistivity. Now, this is an application of a fundamental principle in physics called thermonic emission, the idea of releasing particles, in this case probably electrons, with the addition of energy such as thermal energy. Now whilst there are mobile, more mobile charge carriers in the circuit, and therefore you'd argue won't there be more collisions with the metal ions, the, this effect of uh, more collisions is swamped by the more release of charge carriers. So whilst there will be more charge carrier metal ion collisions, the just increased amount of charge carriers becoming mobile has increased the current and decreased the resistivity. 
So the overall effect of adding more charged carriers from the atomic structure decreases the resistivity and increases your conductivity. Now another name for an atomic structure is a lattice. So you can also use the phrase, you can release the charge carriers from the lattice to become mobile. Now this effect is also noted in LDRs as well as thermistors, except it is not thermal energy that affects an LDR, rather radiant energy, electromagnetic radiation. So in this example, the higher the light intensity rate, uh, incident to the LDR, the more work done to the mobile charge carriers. Okay, so more uh, charge carriers become liberated and mobile. So as a result, there are more mobile charge carriers in the metal wire, decrease in resistivity. So this can be indicated in the following graph. So if we consider a thermistor, at the low temperatures, there's little work done to the semiconductor, there's few mobile charge carriers, so there's a higher resistance, whilst at a high temperature, there's lots of work done to the semiconductor and many mobile charge carriers, so we've got a low resistance. Now, the type of thermistor which this relationship is true for is called a negative temperature coefficient, or NTC thermistor. Now, these are the only thermistors that are covered at AQA A-level physics. Now, it's also the same for an LDR. You'll notice it's the sh same shape graph because it's the same physics principle, just with a different type of energy store, radiant energy as opposed to thermal energy. So like we said before, low light intensity, little work done to the semiconductor, few mobile charge carriers, a high resistance and resistivity. With a high light intensity, lots of work done to the semiconductor, many mobile charge carriers, low resistance and resistivity. So just to clarify and summarize everything, in a conductor, when the temperature increases, the metal ions vibrate with a greater amplitude, so there are going to be more mobile, more collisions between the mobile charge carriers and ions, which will increase the resistivity. So when the temperature increases, the resistivity increases. But for a semiconductor, when the temperature increases, more mobile charge carriers become liberated when work is done to them. So there'll be more mobile charge carriers in the circuit, which will just increase the conductivity, which will decrease the resistivity. So when the temperature increases, the resistivity decreases. So in today's lesson, what we should have covered is we should have looked at A, what a semiconductor and conductor are, and how their resistivities change dependent on the temperature and dependent on the light intensity. I hope you've enjoyed this particular lesson. Thank you very much and take care.